felhasználhat mindenkit. Székely Tamás fők, mint az ugye elhangzott, és a bitcoin rossz indulatú felhasználhatóságáról fogok beszélni, illetve hát végül is ennek a körülményeiről. And about the circumstances of that malicious use and uh, how it is set up. Yeah, the first round, the Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin itself, what is that? How does it function? Uh, how, uh, uh, as, as time allows, I will go into some uh, technical details. And then uh, just uh, uh, to mention, uh, to just to the limits of a one slide, the Tor network, and on that basis we can build the laundering of money, which is uh, in the world of Bitcoin much more uh, the uh, making uh, Bitcoin anonymous by various mixing services uh, rather than actual uh, money laundering. And uh, once we have a quite clear laundered money, then what can we do that uh, money on the black market? Now, a few ideas about uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uh, uh, maybe the simplest uh, and the cheapest uh, way to exchange money uh, electronically. It is very simple because just a few clicks and then we can start already our uh, transaction and very cheap because practically it is free of charge. There are, of course, a few exceptions uh, if we can uh, get some co uh, yield some commission, but otherwise it's a um, uh, uh, method of payment free of charge. It was a, uh, call, uh, a guy called Sashimoto uh, who uh, claimed uh, to have uh, initiated it, and it was uh, 2009, January 3, that it was effectively implemented. I say that it was the person who called himself Sashimoto because uh, uh, although he, uh, admit, uh, he called himself Japanese, but in some cases is he's using some very uh, uh, good uh, literature uh, English uh, uh, language and some some occasions American language so it was still uh, impossible up to today to find out who that person uh, effectively is now it is a fully decentralized system which uh, means uh, first of all that uh, uh, it is uh, that with one single server you cannot destroy the system, but it also means that there is no central authority who would uh, control the whole system. There are uh, uh, no uh, various levies and taxes that the user would have to pay. It is really fully uh, free, and it is the participants who make who operate it. As there is no central authority to defend it uh, and to circumvent it with different types of laws and regulations, uh, which are basically aimed at uh, uh, various uh, uh, people who would like to uh, circumvent it and cheat uh, with it, there is uh, another system that is a comp uh, very good system uh, it is on a pictographic basis that it is conceived. There are elliptic uh, circles which are used, uh, which is a PKI uh, infrastructure and SH62 algorithm, which is uh, uh, very well known in the world of the Bitcoin. Uh, there are several advantages. Uh, if we uh, look at bitcoin.org, I would not uh, like to read them up all. What I would talk about is uh, security and identity uh, protection. Uh, this was so good that I just couldn't uh, miss it from my slide. This is something no PC compliance. Um, the uh, Bitcoin emission uh, by the system takes place in the following way. It is an uh, emission which is halved every fourth year. So 25 Bitcoin is put into cir circulation uh, every uh, minutes. And then uh, what it means that uh, uh, because it is uh, the emission is stable uh, rate, uh, there is no much inflation. If we follow the curve up to the end, then uh, basically where emission is uh, uh, reduced to zero, then uh, Bitcoin will cease to inflate. And as all of the currencies like this one is measured and, co uh, and all the other currencies are inf uh, going uh, on inflation, for, so uh, the Bitcoin is already deflated. It, it is worth more and more compared to the other cur currencies. And once uh, we talk about the value of Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a real value. Uh, there are several sites uh, dealing with that, uh, uh, with the fact that uh, uh, the name of Bitcoin should be uh, changed into other names like US dollar uh, and the Mongops. Uh, uh, I will show that. Uh, uh, 
to the extent of some slides. Uh, that uh, graph is from Magdox, uh, and it shows uh, the uh, exchange rate. Uh, it is not at, as stable as any average uh, currency. Fluctuation is a little bit higher. Presently, uh, is $136 uh, around that today. And if we talk about instability, then I would like to show what happened in the month of April. Uh, just uh, because uh, uh, the servers of Mongops uh, for two days were inaccessible. And then uh, uh, from 266, uh, the rate was uh, dropped back to 60 odds. And uh, it was a very uh, sharp uh, drop. And the first uh, uh, idea was that maybe the, it was a server of Mongops which, uh, which received an attack. And uh, this. Uh, uh, that it was not uh, an attack, but it is the day page which is so uh, popular that they just couldn't uh, uh, resist the charge. Uh, Mangox uh, uh, name is uh, is uh, the magic uh, on uh, it's an online version of this uh, uh, game. Uh, magic the Gathering uh, Exchange is basically there is a, this is uh, the uh, uh, abbreviation of that uh, long name but uh, f uh, the exchange of cars was uh, dropped and it was the bit uh, bitcoin stock exchange with got which uh, took over this role how can we uh, obtain a bitcoin we need a wallet in the wallet we can have a software based or online uh, we, i will talk about the software version because we can get closer to the cryptograph because uh, anyone can uh, register their sign in there uh, and uh, among the softwares the, these are the most uh, widespread uh, and most relevant which uh, uh, and this is which ensures the basis for the system if we select this then our client uh, will uh, uh, download a uh, uh, archive of a couple of megabytes which includes all the transactions which have taken place uh, multibit is much more uh, efficient uh, uh, when it comes to sources. There are less features, but the uh, uh, the charge to the load on the machine is less. And of course, the last one is the uh, one is the most uh, secure. I tried it uh, on Windows. Uh, uh, we have only the beta, but I think it is worthwhile to look uh, to to follow that with interest how it will develop in the future. This is how uh, Bitcoin looks like. Uh, it, you can see that I created three wallets, uh, two of them. Uh, uh, two to 160 uh, can be uh, created, which is quite a big number. And I mentioned that it is a PK infrastructure that it is uh, based on. So we need a public key. And the uh, public key usually is said is that it's the address itself, which is uh, almost true, uh, with the only addition uh, that uh, uh, the public key uh, is, should be still uh, ash256. Uh, uh, and this hash should be, uh, the checksum should be added, and then it will be coded. And finally, we shall obtain about a 33-character string, and this is our string, which will be our public address. Uh, this is uh, 160, which is the outer uh, hash uh, that we uh, will def define the number of the addresses that we can create. Two on the uh, 256, uh, uh, which is uh, says that if all of the uh, uh, the dust particles of the Earth uh, would be added by, uh, uh, complemented by uh, the same amount from another planet, then it would uh, still not be that uh, number. So the system does not uh, check uh, when it uh, creates a key uh, pair because uh, there is uh, such a uh, choice available. Uh, so uh, one uh, other element in this respect, this is uh, in detail. If uh, anybody would like to look it back from video, uh, there is a good link uh, which you can also use for developers. Uh, you have a detailed description uh, of how the Bitcoin protocol functions. Uh, private key. Uh, what it is, is from the wallet.com. Uh, uh, it's a Windows and, Li and Linux uh, version. Wallet uh, dot, uh, is uh, where we have everything. Uh, the public key also, and also all uh, the pieces of information that we require so that to transfer uh, our wallets from one uh, PC to, the, to another. Uh, so all uh, is included in that file, uh, and uh, everything can be backed up, and uh, it, it can be protected by a password. And uh, of course, if we have uh, larger values, then it is also possible, uh, value amounts, uh, to, to st uh, store it uh, in various folders. 
And then uh, let's look at a transaction, how it uh, looks like. Uh, first, uh, at first sight, it's not uh, nice enough, but uh, it's uh, finally fairly simple. So uh, first of all, we have to clarify that Bitcoin does not uh, keep uh, on record the balance of the various transactions, but the transactions are open, transparent. It is uh, visible for all of the peers. Now, how many Bitcoins I have, uh, it can be uh, certified by the transactions I receive. And uh, if it is with somebody else, uh, this is I would like, then I see my transaction where I was the beneficiary from an earlier transaction. And then, uh, and also uh, the uh, public key of the next owner, and I, I will then uh, uh, hash uh, them together, and w uh, I will sign it with my private key. In this way, so this has two functions. One, that because I signed it with my private key, my public key uh, can be used for, uh, to check it, counter check it, uh, anybody else can counter check it, and I can also do that. As, as I send it to all my peers, and they also send it to all of the peers, then all the peers can see if there was any uh, uh, coverage for that transaction, any credit for that transaction. Uh, another signature, uh, which also works as a fingerprint, uh, which also ensures that uh, the transaction cannot be modified, or if a modification could be taken place, that would uh, come up to the uh, forefront. Uh, that would be quite clear. Uh, now, Bitcoin protocol is uh, uh, already well known. So I can also show it to you how a transaction works. Uh, now there is an input there and two output transactions uh, over there. This is uh, quite typical for the world of B the Bitcoin, because if we look at a, a specific examples, uh, PropExplorer.com uh, is the place where we can look at uh, all the transactions. Uh, it is an online platform where you can look uh, for it. And this picture is also from there. I just manipulated it a little, but this is where it comes from. And there we have a specific example. That there is an incoming transaction, uh, with, uh, uh, which is the worth of three Bitcoin, but uh, it is only one Bitcoin I would like to transfer. So uh, we should uh, decide what would happen to the two Bitcoins remaining. Normally, we shall transfer it back to us. And if uh, we didn't uh, uh, do it, then uh, the, uh, those two Bitcoins would disappear for us. So this is a typical thing that there are two outputs, uh, outputs and one output is our own address where we transfer for the money back to us, ourselves. Of course, because this is a network, peer-to-peer -peer network, there are uh, plenty of problems that we have to solve. For example, uh, we say that uh, each of the peers will validate the transaction, the ongoing uh, transaction, and evidently uh, that uh, whether this uh, money was uh, spent twice or some, anybody would uh, want it to abuse with it, it's the only way is that uh, I accept the first transaction valid, and if anybody else would like to try to adopt the same transaction as uh, valid, then it will not, uh, as, uh, then it will be uh, become invalid. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, uh, Mallory received a Bitcoin from Alice and uh, uh, who would like to uh, play with it. Uh, uh, we send to uh, 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 Bob and uh, Terrorist and we'll also send to uh, himself. Now, the peers on the green line uh, think that uh, there is another transaction, a valid transaction, that the uh, transaction on the red line. And basically, in that case, what uh, will happen that from the uh, point of view of the system, it is quite the same where this one Bitcoin is and if uh, it can be uh, checked and used, then it is also the same for the users, but this uh, conflict situation has to be solved. And uh, how is that solved? Uh, it's uh, with a specific system, but Bitcoin, as we said, is a peer-to-peer -peer based uh, decentralized system, and there are some very, uh, we can, you can only find some very uh, interesting, comp uh, complicated solutions. And this is why the blocks there are. The blocks are uh, grouping the transactions, that in each block you have the hash of the former uh, block. So they uh, create, uh, they f uh, form a chain, and if anybody would like to interfere, then it uh, will be quite uh, visible, because this uh, is served as a, as a uh, uh, safe uh, elements. Now, we have to also make it more difficult that anyone could uh, play with the block, because with the, uh, this block, uh, because otherwise, um, uh, uh, all types of transactions could be undertaken. And this is why the concept of proof of work has been created, which is a complex uh, mathematical uh, operation, which is much more like uh, drawing lots. Uh, it, it requires time. and. Uh, this is the block info uh, that we have, where there are all the data of the block, for example, the hash of the previous 
block the transactions and some other uh, block uh, specific information. And uh, uh, whoever would like to create the block uh, uh, would have to attach some random uh, bits that if uh, all of this is hashed uh, twice uh, with AS256 uh, uh, so that uh, more processing uh, would be needed for that, then the whole hash which we obtain should be smaller than the actual target. The target is a 256-bit uh, number, which is uh, uh, gradually decreasing as the uh, transaction capacity of the Bitcoin increases. So that means that the system will uh, reach that uh, one block will be created in 10 minutes' time. If everybody uh, uh, would uh, do the uh, purchase the same things and count blocks, then uh, it will, uh, the target will be set in such a way that it will take 10 minutes to create the block. So whoever would like to mine the blocks and would like to hope uh, for getting some money, they are fighting against each other, but uh, that is a topic I will uh, talk about uh, uh, more in detail later. Uh, we also mentioned that the blocks perform a chain. What happens if two peers create a block simultaneously? Well, the winner block will be the one that will be continued, so always the longest chain will win. Uh, a Bitcoin transaction <coughs> counts as reliable roughly after six blocks or one hour, and it's not worth trying to cheat. Uh, by quickly generating a long chain because uh, this would require a com computational capacity. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer network. If I want to be faster than everybody else and I'd have to compete with everybody else, which would require a huge computational cap capacity and a huge uh, uh, dose of luck. So it's not really something that is worth trying. And even if I had the, uh, avail uh, the capa compute capacity available, and uh, I, I could, could achieve a lot more bitcoins by trying to mine them than by trying to cheat. If two blocks are generated simultaneously, they will still be different because the one who uh, de decodes, uh, decodes uh, the proof, uh, the the block, the proof of work, he will credit himself with the first transaction, which is 25 bitcoins plus the amount within the block. So these are the 25 bitcoins that uh, allows new bitcoins to be generated. So bitcoins uh, get into the system by these blocks being generated. When it was first invented, the sole concept, they invented it for a processor-based mining. Then came the GPUs, which provided a multiple of CPU capacity capabilities. And, and currently, uh, the new hot thing is ASICs. Uh, I tried this mining. Um, uh, a 7080 uh, video card was run for three weeks. Uh, this the computer consumed roughly 250 watts, so these three weeks cost me 5,000 forints, and I was able to scrape together six to seven dollars. So those who try to mine with the GPU will not get far. The 7870 card provides the exact same compute performance than the basic ASIC you can get. The video card costs six to 70,000 forints. An ASIC costs roughly six to seven thousand forints. A video card uh, consumes, together with the uh, computer, roughly two hundred fifty watts. And an ASIC, if I plug it into a Raspberry, then the two together will eat five watts. So that's a huge difference. And this also shows in the uh, increasing compute capacity for mine, uh, mining bitcoins. In the past two weeks. <coughs> The Bitcoin compute speed grew to uh, grew fourfold, which uh, is uh, evidently a result of the uh, ASIC spread. If we had looked at mi the mining rig before Bitcoin, this is what we would have found. If you if you have, if, if if you would have searched for a, for the term mining rig, in the past week, mining rig has become the uh, a Bitcoin related term lately, so you need to scroll way down in Google to 
find anything else but Bitcoin mining hardware. You can mine uh, alone or in on a pool. The biggest such pool is the uh, BTC Guild. Pool means that multiple computers uh, 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 try to create a block by unifying their forces and then distribute the uh, amount they may have achieved to divvy it up among themselves. This decreases variance. Income will be much more uh, planable. I may be, I may buy the by the uh, best ASIC, and I won't get results for a whole year. F f hunting in a, in, in a in a pool gives you a lot more chance. There is a CG miner application. It knows all the GPU, most ASICs, so it's very compatible piece of software. And BTC Guild's uh, website gives a lot of help. Uh, for workers, to, to manage workers. Workers are the computers actually performing these computations. You can download graph, uh, graphs and similar. It's very, it's very useful. Let's say a couple of words about Bitcoin's anonymity. I mentioned that all transactions are f completely public as against the transactions only used in the banking world. Uh, where only I and the beneficiary know uh, what is going on. But our address is not necessarily public. On the contrary, uh, we'd like to make the Bitcoin address, well, Bitcoin wallet address independent of our own addresses if we want to be. Uh, so anyway, it is exactly the opposite of what we see in a traditional banking transaction where others don't know what our bank account number is, but the tra and, and the transactions are not public at all. <clears throat> our anonymity may be impaired in, uh, in ma at many places. For instance, when we buy a Bitcoin or when we buy something on the internet and provide our own uh, address, or when we carry on transactions that uh, make us traceable, or uh, I may provide my Bitcoin address at a forum where otherwise my person is known, but I'm known personally, so I need to watch out for, for a lot of such stumbling blocks. In Mancox, in order to buy a Bitcoin, we need a proof of identity. This is like a, uh, it could be a driving license or a, uh, an ID card, and a proof of residency that uh, proves where you live. Uh, as far as I know, it could be a, uh, a uh, public utility bill or e something else that identifies you. So they have all your all, all my data. They also know which which of my wallets they are transferring money to. They do not accept uh, credit or debit cards at most such uh, sites. Only wire transfer or there may be one um, solution simply because if a Bitcoin has been transferred, it cannot be undone. While during a bank card, a, a, debit, a credit card transaction, you may try to get the bank to reverse the 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 uh, transaction with Bitcoins. This does not exist. I promise something about Tor. I believe that most of you have no it and have probably actively used it. So let me just outline the basics. Alice would like to communicate anonymously, so she uh, uh, reaches the first store node anonymously uh, of uh, the database of which has been loaded to her previously. And within the Tor network, this traffic is routed to uh, randomly, uh, hopefully preserving her anonymity. There's one more uh, uh, other important aspect of Tor. You can use it to reach sites that you otherwise cannot. The Onion top level domain is an anonymous domain that provides uh, services that uh, you don't find in the clear. I found a uh, picture that shows you the situation. If you use your browser normally, then you are surfing at the top of the ocean in order to uh, dive down to to hackers and other uh, other uh, nebulous people. You will need to use the Tor network. This can be done either with a plain Tor browser 
which is a modified Firefox, but you also have a De modified Debian operating system that you can use, which and I think it's even better. Once our public IP address is covered, the only thing that we need to anonymize is the transaction, so we need to anonymize a wallet. Here we have Alice and Bob, but uh, Alice's and Bob's wallet, but obviously Bob's wallet could be replaced with Alice's second wallet, so Alice could uh, also transfer to herself. The only target is to make the uh, transaction untraceable, so the transaction must be void uh, of any information identifying the sender or recipient. All transactions are public, and therefore. You, we need to insert a central provider, a mixing provider by Alice uh, uh, transferring from her wallet one and Bob from his wallet two without any link between the two wallets. This seems to be okay and untraceable, although there are methods to try to trace them back. This is a very simple solution because if, if you transfer, if you're looking for transactions pretty near to each other, then you'll probably find some which is not necessarily a good thing. Obviously, there are tricks to protect against this. What would happen if Bob had two wallets and we just split the outgoing money? This would immediately make it more difficult to identify Bob. Uh, and the mixing provider itself can uh, transfer money from various wallets and you could in increase the number of green lines to any number you want. And you can also separate these transactions uh, in time with one transaction following the previous one uh, only days later. So there's, there would, there's a note algorithm that can actually uh, connect these two. There's a very good white paper that you see at the bottom, very useful reading. He tested these three mixing provisors and he found that bit laundry allowed input and output transactions to be coordinated or to uh, paired up. But with the other two, it was very interesting to see uh, the chain through which uh, transactions pass. Bitcoin fog is only accessible f through a Tor network, although they also have a portal uh, in the clear, but there they only offer the anonymous address and uh, ask users to use that. And blockchain info is accessible from anywhere, and these services do have a fee, and blockchain.info is lower, but it's only a very low fee of about 1.5%. And obviously, if you are looking around on the Tor network, you can uh, find the various mixing service providers that promise you a lot of things. There was one I found that said don't use Bit, Bit, uh, Bitcoin for because that's the NSA's website. And while we are at the risks, there are risks. A mixing provider is a good solution, but as everywhere, IT, you, you need to be very careful. We. You can, you can never know. Well, this is a very complex uh, transaction string that the mixing provider is doing. It obviously needs to log all these transactions somehow to, to, to correct any errors that it may, it may, may commit. Will these logs be deleted? And if yes, then when? You will never know. And if there is a problem, a legal problem, will the mixing provider uh, provide our data to the to, to a requesting authority? That's a question. Any organization may be behind such a mixing provider and will see all transactions and even uh, the items that you buy for your bitcoins allegedly anonymously. Well, uh, we could use more mixing providers in series. One of them will be uh, reliable, hopefully. This has the disadvantage that it increases the costs. So the guy who wrote the previous white paper uh, calculated that uh, the uh, handling costs will go up, obviously, if you concatenate uh, mixing providers. 
Uh, I also mentioned that the, uh, these transfer pairs can be separated in time. Uh, what happens if we have two? Well, if, a, if a mixing provider uh, uh, goes bankrupt and uh, uh, there is an example of that, InstaWallet had that fate. You can read up on it. And just a comment. Bitcoin's basic principle is that it is peer-to-peer -peer decentralized. And what is a mixing provider, if not a centralized point? This actually seems to be defeating Bitcoin's basic uh, philosophy. So once we are, we have done all of this. Then we have an anonymized uh, uh, tender. How can we spend it? You can buy drugs, guns. I haven't found any 50 caliber, only, only smaller. But there's a lot of things you can you can you can buy for your bitcoins. Uh, as you see, all prices are quoted in bitcoins. Uh, you can buy driver's license, uh, credit card. The, and a lot of stuff just to show you how many things you can buy if you want to. Obviously, I'll expand a bit more on IT-related items. Let me add one more comment. You may have read it. On the 2nd of October, this site was uh, taken offline. This is Silk Road. This was the Silk Road site that was uh, taken offline, has been around since 2011, and this was the largest site offering uh, drugs and similar. I just did a lot of screenshots, and one, of the, one day this was the screen that uh, greeted me, and I read the news the next day. So in a couple of uh, hours, Bitcoin's uh, value fell about by about $20. What are the IT-related possibilities that we can use it for? Well, as a customer, we can buy a lot of things. You can buy here exploits, data service, spams, whatever you wish. And why should we stop so soon? It, we might need it. We can also build our own botnet. There are multiple business models. Let me detail one and mention another, but these are the most characteristic ones. A couple of advertisements. I was looking for DDoS ads. Uh, for example's sake, here you see 20 gigabit per sec bandwidth offered. I don't know about too many servers that are able to withstand 2 gigabit per sec. And it's not even expensive. Two hours is enough to, to make that server crumble. And you find a lot of such advertisements. I could have found even a lot more, but it's just for showing to you. And if you want you to build your own botnet, this is one solution, paper install service. The other one is the exploit service, both of which will be discussed a bit, just to show you what it looks like. In the case of paper install, you have the clients on the top. All of them is running a little bit, a little software that it wants to install uh, on a on X number of computers. Uh, you can even specify the geographical region where you are hunting for these uh, uh, computers. Uh, the clients give their software to the PPS service provider, and that provider will uh, send these downloader, small downloaders to the, uh, to the clients it wants to infect and those will then download what is needed. The PPI service provider uh, may also outsource the dirty work to so-called affiliates. And the clear net, you can see uh, that some parties are looking for uh, reliable affiliates. Obviously, cost efficiency optimization, uh, optimization uh, uh, causes such affiliates uh, working for multiple providers. And you may not be sure that your PPI service provider 
may also infect your computers that you that should be working for you. It, it may infect your computers with stuff from other PPIs. This is the essence of this service in a few lines. There is another white paper about that, a very good one, with test results, also describing the test environment. And what I haven't told you yet is that, according to the white paper statistics, 12 out of 20 malware are spread in this mode, which is significant, I think, and it use, uh, they use all, all, all methods for spreading this, drive-by downloads as well as embedded uh, malware in legitimate software or social engineering. So it's, uh, these PPI providers often change their names. The, service, uh, the provider stays the same the one who is running the business, but the name is often changing. These are some ex-PPI providers uh, about whom you can read about the link at the bottom. These PPI providers offer themselves in, in the clear. I haven't provided a real screenshot about them because it's very difficult to decide whether they are real PPIs, they are bad guys, or just want to install some malware. And the second thing you can, I want to talk to you is exploit as a service. This is about the victim being redirected through a lot of redirections to an exploit site, probably uh, normally a black hole a place. 29% of, of all malicious URLs are uh, lead, lead the victim to a, a black hole exploit. This is the exploit kits uh, based on a uh, browser, browser plugin uh, vulnerability. Uh, uh, to, to upload some malware on the victim's uh, computer. It also is a pay-for-service, obviously, with another white paper that describes this specific exploit as a service. Yeah, 29%, that's what I said. And this is a very easy-to-manage web-based uh, uh, solution for clients. The difference to BPI is that in exploit as a service, you have malicious URLs pointing to malicious servers, and machines are infected only through drive-by download. And between the two halfways, there is a third possibility, which is a bit of this and a bit of that, and yet neither of the two. And this is the so-called traffic BPI, which is a PPI but only uses drive-by downloads, or it's a, the service is an exploit with the aid that once you have bought the service, the server where the server where the exploit pack is running, it even provides you the victim. You don't have to trouble yourself with uh, uh, trying to spam pe people, directing them to to, to to your places. They they hunt the victim for you. If you draw. Uh, uh, rotate this in picture by 90 degrees, and these three layers fall into one another, then you practically get PPI. So here we talk about three uh, separate solutions. Uh, basically, of course, uh, the picture is much more uh, complex because they are uh, more uh, resembling each other. Now, uh, this is uh, one of the last things which I would like to show to you, this picture, because it is uh, so full of uh, ideas and it's really quite, uh, the, uh, all of the elements are here and it has its place in my lecture. And I read about it, of course, also in an article that, uh, that the bank robbers are using a car. It's not, uh, doesn't mean that the car 
car is a bad thing. So a Bitcoin is also a solution which can be used for bad purposes, but uh, but uh, it can also offer good opportunities uh, uh, for caritative uh, uh, purposes. Uh, the, uh, more and more of them have a, a Bitcoin address, and you can also make donations in Bitcoins. Now, if you uh, liked what we talked about, uh, these are the links, uh, the references which are the best, maybe. They can be very useful. They explain very well uh, the topics. Uh, and, of course, also uh, as for the after the 41st, uh, slide with there may still be some questions and then uh, the 42nd one is here but I will be of course here all day long and a uh, couple of hours which we still have left, uh, left and then we can still uh, come back to the, to the topics. Thank you for your attention.